What's up guys? I am back to bring you your recap on Black Ink Crew Season 6, Episode 6, and it is titled Caesar for Mayor. And this recap is delayed, but not denied, my God. <laughs> Now, let's begin with addressing the fact that my baby daddy, sexual chocolate thickness Teddy, played the flute as a kid for two years. It was so cute hearing Teddy admit that he played the flute. And it's like, out of all instruments, he'd play a dainty little flute, but it was so cute to hear that. Now, I want to address Donna going apartment hunting in New York. And when the realtor or the person who was showing her around on the apartment tours took her to an apartment that was $4,000 a month, my first thought was, how is Donna's ass going to afford a $4,000 a month apartment if she can't even pay for a room, my God? And it was strange because typically realtors meet with their customers or clients and they figure out what price range you want to be in and what price range you can afford to avoid wasting time at properties where you're never gonna be able to rent nor purchase. So I feel like that was just, I guess, a part of showing us, people who do not live in New York, the difference in what you can get for one set price in New York versus another, because when he took her to the other apartment and the rent was $2,000, which is still extremely high in most places, like that is a luxury apartment in a lot of places. Child, even where I live, $2,000 can get you something really, really nice, a lot nicer than what you get in New York. So uh, when the building manager came down, and recognized Donna from the Help Me Howard segment and exposed that he did not want to rent to her because of her previous issues with her landlords or roommates, I just felt like that was a fair assessment because it's not really discrimination because I do believe that there are certain circumstances and reasons why you can deny a person. And the reality of it is this particular landlord or building manager or company could base their residence off of their credit score, my God. And you best believe Donna's credit score is probably in the basement, my God, no pun intended. So it, 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 it's not really a discrimination issue because Donna said that she would contact her legal team. And my thing is, girl, you cannot even afford a room. How the hell do you think people are going to believe that you have a legal team, my God? You were on Help Me Howard. But later on, we did see that Donna tried to retaliate against her former roommate and she egged the house and threw toilet tissue and posted a banner with the rest of the Black Ink crew staff all dressed in black, my God. And I'm wondering, was that really the roommate's house? Because one, this was being filmed on TV. So there is evidence of you guys committing a crime because vandalization is a crime. And then you guys did it like with witnesses. So I, I, I'm not sure if that was really where the girl lived before because it just does not make sense that you would commit a crime on TV, my God. Now, I must say it was great to see that Alex, AKA the Vagina Slayer, has a great co-parenting relationship with his child's mother. I love seeing him with his child and how he embraced him. And he also shared that he had a very bad criminal past and his son is what helped him change his life and get back on the right track, my God. But I gagged when Alex said that he had been arrested eight times, my God, and that he has to go to court because of failure to pay back his probation payments, which was because he was charged with aggravated assault on a police officer. I'm just like, my God, that's a lot. But we did find out that that happened when he was rushing or on his way to the birth of his child. So I guess it is consistent with it happening prior to him having his son in his life. Now, what was even more interesting was when Alex shared that he feels like he has been always targeted by police because of his father having a horrible 
an extensive criminal past and being notorious. And it was so great to see my baby daddy, Teddy, show support and stated that he would go to Alex's court hearing with him. And I, I have mixed feelings about the whole scene where they were addressing black men being targets. Now, I do acknowledge that we are targets because of our brown skin, but I'm very mindful of people using that in situations where they have actually committed crimes and they were locked up because of those crimes, my God. Because Teddy mentioned he was locked up, his oldest brother is uh, has a life sentence, his youngest brother is in jail, and my thing is, Please don't intertwine the innocent black men who are being targeted with the ones who actually committed crimes. Now that's not to say that even those aren't targeted, but it's just, that's why I said I'm, I'm just, it's a hard place for me to give a solid opinion because it, it, I don't know guys, it's hard because I just feel like you don't want to, some people are targeted and they and they didn't do anything wrong. And then there are others who will claim that they have been targeted by police and have been done wrong, but they really did commit crime. So Alex and his court hearing. Now, I don't think Teddy was paying attention because I heard, and I don't know if you guys heard, the judge said that there were two things that they needed to address as it pertains to Alexander. And I love the fact that Alex's real name is Alexander. He's a cute guy and that is such a cute name. I love that name. So I, I know he mentioned it before. I think Melody mentioned his name was Alexander. But hearing him say it in the courtroom, just it just had a ring to it, my God. But I was gagging to see that his probation payback amount was $10 a month and he had missed the payments and missed up to $42 worth of payments, my God. Now, if he is struggling, that kind of, I guess, gives him an excuse, but he seems like he loves his son so much. So to be in this situation and be in front of the judge and having this hearing all because of $10 missed payments, that is just not worth your son not having his father around. And granted, the son lives two hours away in upstate New York, but that was just so sad to hear that he was not maintaining that when it was such a small amount to be paid back, my God. Now, I believe the judge did up his payments to $45 a month, and he said he could afford it because he does have a job. But I knew it wasn't over, my God, because one, the judge said he failed to appear, and it was great that the judge was willing to, you know, as long as you can pay it right now, we'll let that go. But if they had the correct address, how did Alex not know that he had a court date back in June if his missed payment was back in March? And I'm thinking that sounds about right. So I don't know what month they're in during when this footage was filmed, but Alex has to do a better than for us to find out that he was getting locked up because he has warrants in two other cities. It's like, boy, this cannot be fabricated. I get that you may feel like a target. And I was actually giving my boo Teddy the side eye when he said, oh, he must really have a target on him. No, the judge already said there was two things to address, my guy, but I guess Teddy did not hear it. So I knew he was getting locked up for whatever the second issue was that there was to be addressed. So I guess next week we'll find out how long and when and if we'll see the Vagina Slayer again, my God. Now back in Atlanta with Caesar and Sky. Now you guys know I hate the blue hair, but Persuasion, the stripper who is thinking that she's Caesar's girlfriend, she looked stunningly beautiful with that blue hair, my God. She is wearing that hair. Now, I gagged when Sky walked up to her when Persuasion said she had some news and Sky said, oh, you're pregnant. And she said, oh, wait, you're drinking Henny. You're not pregnant. <laughs> I cracked up, my God. But also the gag was when she found out from Persuasion that she thinks that she is Caesar's boyfriend and Sky said, honey, Caesar can't handle this, my God, so I'm gonna handle it. Girl, he has an STD, you should get checked out too. And when Sky pumped off, my God, and just left, I said, Sky is crazy. Now, was I the only one wondering if the Atlanta fire marshal scene walking up 
in on Black Ink Atlanta, real or staged, my guy, because something about that did not sit right to me. Even the town hall meeting seemed 100% fake, but I will say I had the best laugh when they asked if there was a representative or owner from Black Ink who wanted to speak. And Sky said, oh, I thought you'd never ask, my God. And she pumped up there. I said, Sky is such a character. This is why we love her. She is the reason why Black Ink Crew New York is surviving, my God. But I will say it was great to see Caesar being able to be diplomatic which shows him having some leadership skills, although he does not seem like a great leader, my God. And even though it was probably fake, he did come across and handle that situation well with him being able to defuse it. Also, it was so funny seeing Sky do her exercises at the senior citizen home and she is just a character, but it was so funny watching that. And I love seeing her balance of crazy with Caesar's balance of reality, I guess. But I enjoyed that scene. And last but not least, I do have to close out with addressing Bay's situation with her mother and her mother being afraid of being killed by her father. And see, this is why you guys gotta be careful on social media, my God, because I'm trying to figure out if Bay and her mom know how dangerous her father is, and Bay's mom is still in Korea. Why is your mama on social media? Why is she on Facebook? Because that is the easiest way to find somebody, my God. If you know that's somebody trying to kill you, you should not have a Facebook page up, my God. But hopefully it works out because Bay did not speak to her mom for a week and she talks to her every day. So let's lift Mother Bay up in prayer, my God. And hopefully she is okay. But it was great that Bay's Bay, I believe his name is Rob was there to console her and be there for her. And although I thought Bay's Bay was broke because I thought he was moving in with her because of his brokenness, my church members and subscribers let me know and reminded me that his lease was ending and that was why he was moving with her. Also in this episode, Bay definitely confirmed that her Bay has a job, my God. So that's about it guys. I thank you for tuning in. Please get the discussion popping in the comment section. Follow me on all social media outlets. Thumbs up this video. Subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notifications. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.